we went deep on these oil filters. Now, if you didn't see the previous video, uh, this is going to go much further than that video, and I suggest that you go ahead and take a look at that one. But basically, we have all of these filters here from a 3.0. They fit a 3.0 Duramax diesel LM2 LZ0, as well as a 2.7 liter Turbo Max found in the new Colorado and the Silverado four-cylinder. Now, I broke this down into this giant chart right there, and this is actually in a nicer form on the Duramax News website. So we'll get into all those specs in just a minute here. But this is all the filter media. I cut it open. I cut the filters on the ground right there. That's how we got the media out. Before we get into the media or the cores, let's go and take a look at the end caps. And we can see the whole design here, front and back. This is the anti-drain back valve right here. This sits on there. It allows oil to pass through these holes through here. And then it goes past the anti-drain back valve. And then the anti-drain back valve sits on there and it holds the fluid in there when you shut it off. That way, whenever you do a startup, you have all your oil inside there. Now there's a couple different variations of this anti-drain back valve. This one is made of a rubber. This is about the cheapest you can go right here. And they do deform easily, super uh, flexible, temperature sensitive. Um, and then so the next upgrade would be silicone. Now this is much less temperature temperature sensitive and it does provide a better sealing surface. It just feels like a higher quality, but you can see that the casting of it is basically the same on those two. And here's the end cap style on the Fram. So the Fram has the silicone, PF66 has the rubber. We're gonna move on to the UPF66R. And again, this is another rubber, but it's a different design. So it's a little bit more solid probably retains its shape better. You can see the difference in the hole pattern versus the other ones as it's a two part right there when we just have single holes passing through. So let's move over to the wicks with a higher quality silicone as compared to the Fram. This one definitely retains its shape much better. The hole design on the end cap is different. We have measurements of all of the holes. Definitely a nice ceiling setup right there. We're going to move on to the K&N. Now if you notice, again, silicone, anti-drain back valve, look very similar, right? So then the hole design versus this hole design. So you can see a difference there. This one looks like it flows a little bit better because the holes are a little bit larger on the K&N. Silicone, silicone, rubber, silicone, rubber, silicone. Very different with the PPE. It's difficult to get off. It retains its shape very well. It's just a, a much higher durometer feeling silicone as compared to these much softer ones right here. And as you see, this one goes back on there pretty darn good. Look at that ceiling. That's going to seal. There's no, there's no doubt about that. I can't even get it off with my gloves again. All right, so whole design, we have measurements of each. Straight flow through design. Let's move on to the filter media. All right, so starting up here, PF66. This had 65 pleats with a height of 40.48 millimeters. It is a 25 to 30 micron. Uh, material here and the thickness of it is 0.74 millimeters. The Fram here, we had 65 pleats and it was a height of 40.09 millimeters, 20 micron material, and it is a thickness of 0.88. UPF 66R, this had 57 pleats in total, 42.94 millimeters height, 25 to 30 micron material, and it was a thickness of 0.82. The wicks here had 60 pleats in total, 54.12 millimeters tall or height. Micron rating is 23 and a thickness of 0.85 millimeter. K&N with 62 pleats, 40.37 millimeters tall, 30 micron, and this is a thickness of 0.79 millimeters. Last up is the PPE with 69 pleats in total, 90.48 millimeters tall, 
10 micron material with a thickness of 0.68 millimeters. Now if we go to the heights right here, so the PPE came in at 55 inches long, K&N 50 and a quarter, Wix 48 and 7 eighths inch, UPF 66R 51 inches, Fram 55 inches, PF 66 at 55 inches. So you can see the liters with the length. So you can do your measurements with all of those. PF 66 case here, it's squishy, flimsy. Plastic core. We have the bypass valve right there. This is the design, this is the leaf spring design. So basically this is just held in place by these little crimps right there. And that goes on the bottom and that's supposed to seal the oil flow. And then whenever the pressures get too high, it's gonna squeeze through there and out through the top. Now, if you're thinking like I am, it looks like there's like a little window of opportunity for oil to go through there at any time. So I'm not too sure how I feel about this bypass valve style. It's just very basic. Again, it just presses on it right there. And when pressures exceed filter media, it just blasts through there. So that's the design of that. The Fram has the same. Now it's a, a flimsy case, plastic core, same setup of uh, metal end caps on these. UPF 66R here, stronger case, very big difference there. And we have our steel core design on this, metal end caps. Bypass valve right there. Same design as the others. So let's move to the Wix. Very thin case. Metal core. And that is thicker than uh, the UPF 66R that we just checked out. No bypass valve on this, which means all filter media or all oil passes through the filter media only. So that's right there. And this is just a little spring to keep it tight up against the filter itself. So then we're going to move into the K&N. And this is much like the, the first three. It's got a stronger case. And again, it has the nut on the bottom. We've got the leaf spring style bypass valve. Metal core. Let's see how this compares to this one. So it's about the same as the Wix center core. And now the big guy, you can see the big difference right here. Perforated center. Uh, it is a metal core as well, but you can see the holes are much larger to help with flow. And there is a spring, very strong spring in here that helps keep everything pushed up to the top. No bypass. So that's going to be pushing up against there so that way filter it stays good and tight it's not going to spin inside the case none of that and there is a magnet on the bottom which is a neodymium magnet and i can't get it out by hand i tried okay i can get it out but it's it's tough to get out now it is a pretty strong magnet works well case very sturdy case and there we go so if you like all this stuff and you want to see how it performs on a used filter, tune into the next one.